Happy Life friends, welcome back to our channel. Wow, look at me actually uploading within a week for once. Today I'm coming back at you with another research video. For those of you who have seen my previous research video, I had looked at research studies examining whether there were any actual differences between using a cat fountain and a regular water bowl. So because there are so many Russian Blue fans on this channel, I thought that I would take a deeper dive into the research to see if there were any studies done to examine the behavior profiles of Russian Blues compared to other pure breed cats. You might remember that I already uploaded a Russian Blue Traits video, but for that video I had only used general blog sites and veterinary sites to actually compile traits that were common among this breed. So now I'm actually going to depict some research studies available to see what scientists have to say about the Russian Blue. And here's where I put my usual disclaimer. I generally don't like to lump breeds together into one personality type because I do think that even within the same breed, cats can differ in behavior quite widely. So I take these studies with a grain of salt and I also need to mention that I only was able to pick up studies that were publicly available. So there might be more studies in archives that I can't access because I'm not currently a veterinarian or because I don't work at an institution that has access to bigger or more research studies. Okay, so now that that disclaimer is out of the way, let's get into the video. Okay, so I have these studies pulled up here, and actually I was only able to find four publicly available research studies that were either on Russian Blues or including Russian Blues in their sample. So again, take this with a grain of salt. It's definitely not representative of the breed, but it is interesting to see what scientists have to say. So the first two studies I found were specifically about the behavioral profiles of Russian Blues compared to other types of pure breed cats. So this first study I found was published in 2009 and compared the personalities of different cat breeds in Japan. So this study included Russian Blues, Abyssinians, Somali cats, Siamese cats, and Chinchilla cats. I've never heard of Chinchilla cats before, I'll have to look that up. But basically these scientists looked at two different types of behavior traits. They looked at aggressiveness and vivacious, vivacious, vivaciousness. <laughs> Uh, which basically just looks at how hyper or active a cat can be. So to examine these two traits, they administered a survey to 96 different veterinarians in Japan. And basically the survey just asked the veterinarians to rank different types of breeds according to their experience working with these cats. So again, another disclaimer, it's not going to be truly representative of the breed. There might be some recall bias depending on whether or not that actually remembered what each cat acted like. After these surveys were collected and analyzed, the researchers determined that Russian Blues were grouped into being more aggressive and less vivacious, along with the Abyssinian, the Somali cat, the Siamese, and the Chinchilla breed. And if you're curious, the Maine Coon, the Ragdoll, and the Scottish Fold, which are three breeds I forgot to mention were included in the study, were lower in aggressiveness and lower in vivaciousness. I think in terms of Spike, I do think I would categorize him as quite aggressive uh, because he knows how to get what he wants. When he wants breakfast, he'll meow and paw at us and he'll just step all over our chest while we're sleeping. Um, or if he wants to play, he'll come drop his toys in front of us and kind of just like grab onto our legs until we give him attention. I don't really know if I would call him less vivacious. I don't like using that word. Less active though, because he is very hyper aside from when he's sleeping. But again, um, this is why I don't like categorizing breeds in general because they do vary in my opinion. Uh, but again, interesting to see what these veterinarians thought about these different cat breeds. <laughs> Okay, so this second study was published in 2019, a lot more recent, and this second study also compared behavior traits in different types of cats, but instead of Japan, they conducted this in Finland. And here, instead of surveying veterinarians, they actually surveyed cat owners asking about their cat's behavior. And the sample was pretty large. They surveyed over 5,000 cat owners. So I feel like this sample size is definitely better than the previous study. And it's also interesting because here you're actually asking the cat owners who spend all day with their cats versus the veterinarians who might just spend like a couple hours with each cat. So again, the survey just asked the cat owners to rank their cat's behavior traits. And here they looked at various traits, but when the Russian Blues were mentioned, the scientists actually determined that the Russian Blues were more likely to be shy and less likely to engage in wool sucking. 
Okay, so I actually had to look up wool sucking because I had never heard of that before, but apparently some cats grow the habit of sucking on wool or blankets. Uh, Spike doesn't do this, so that definitely checks out. Um, but in terms of being shy, he's definitely not shy. <laughs> he's very aggressive towards strangers too, and he just wants to meet and play with everybody. Another reason why I think it's interesting to look at different studies because here the results are kind of opposite to what the previous study said. The previous study determined that Russian blues were more aggressive and here in the second study researchers determined that Russian blues were more shy towards both cats and strangers. The second study had a lot of different types of cat breeds. I'm not going to go through each one since the focus of this video was supposed to be on Russian blues but if you're curious to read the study I'll link them below like I usually do. Okay, and this third study I found super interesting, but I have to put another disclaimer. The sample size was only 16, and of those 16 cats, only one of them were Russian blues. But I decided to include it because I thought it was an interesting topic because it covered name recognition. So these scientists were looking at whether or not cats were actually able to discern their own name from other very similar sounding nouns. So what the scientists did is they asked the cat owners to recite their cat's names and then four similar nouns and see how much the cat reacted. The way the researchers examined this was by looking at how much movement occurred in the cat's ears or in the cat's head. So they were really just looking to see how much or how big of a reaction the cat had to each word. And in the end, they determined that nine of the 16 cats had an increased reaction to their name by moving their head and ears in a more obvious way. And then in general, they found that 11 of the 16 cats had a reaction to all five of the words, but I guess two of those 11 cats didn't really have a discernible reaction between their name and the other four nouns. So I think Spike definitely knows his name. We've noticed whenever we say Spike, he'll react very obviously by looking at us versus if we just call him like Bud or Buddy, like he'll react a little bit, but not as much. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if cats could low-key understand us, but they just ignore us because they have big egos or something. <laughs> but yeah, interesting stuff. Okay, so this last study I threw in here just because I thought it was a nice FYI. It's not actually about the behavior profiles of Russian blues, but it talks about increased risk of getting urinary tract disease. And this study didn't intend to look specifically at Russian blues, but they actually found that of all the pure breed cats, Russian blues have the highest risk of contracting urinary tract disease. So I thought this was good knowledge to have because for us, when we got Spike, we were always trying to see what ways we could increase his water intake, which is the best way to prevent this. Um, but this actually ties into my other research video, which looked at fountain versus bowl. So if you're interested in watching that video, I'll link it down below. But if you don't feel like watching that video, I'll go ahead and summarize the recommendations that these researchers made in order to help prevent urinary tract disease in your cat. So basically from this study, they found that cats who ate more dry food versus wet food had a higher risk of the disease. And cats who also drink more tap water versus filtered water also had an increased risk. So these are two things that I touched upon in my previous videos, but two additional recommendations that were made that I thought were super interesting were that the researchers recommended having more litter boxes because having fewer litter boxes was also associated with an increased risk for urinary tract disease. And in addition to that, not being neutered was also an increased risk factor. So it looks like neutering your cat will decrease their risk of having any urinary tract problems. <coughs> that wraps up this quick summary of the four research studies I found on Russian blues. All of them weren't necessarily on the behavior profiles, but I hope you found them interesting regardless. Thank you so much for watching as always. If you enjoy these research videos and want me to cover any other topics, please leave them in the comments below. And of course, if you have any other suggestions or questions, also leave those in the comments section as well. See you all in the next video. Bye all. Thank <laughs> you.